Hi, my name is Bridget Gila, and I'm the host to the Bridge to Wellness show. Today, I have a very special guest, Dr. Chila. So I want to talk about um, where you came from. And mm -hmm. okay, first of all, I love your name. Thank you. Could you tell me about the um, Chila? Yeah. Can you tell me about where the, the origins of Chila and your last name too? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Chila is actually a very um, old Hungarian name. Um, it's from the derivative of Chilug, which is star in Hungarian. I also read one book that it uh, symbolized being, like just being, mm -hmm. and I loved it. I was just like, I don't know if this is true, but mm -hmm. I am totally identifying with it. So, um, And then Varesh, which is my last name, um, it's a very ancient kind of Hungarian name as well. So both my parents are actually from Hungary, and so I'm first generation. So yeah, that's where the name oh, is from. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I love how you describe it, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm owning it. I'm owning yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> I can tell. I can tell. Can you tell us how you started your journey in, in this life? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Abs so I'm a, I'm a naturopathic physician. I'm also a licensed acupuncturist. I work in a Santa Rosa at a clinic called True North Health. Um, it's been a really long uh, kind of a very windy journey, I will say. And along the way, I have um, learned a lot that has brought me so much closer to the way I practice medicine now. Mm -hmm. And only now can I look back and see how everything just was so meant to be, you know, just so it happened for a reason. And, mm -hmm. um, and it's amazing. They always say, right, hindsight 2020. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I, you know, I, I grew up in a very traditional Hungarian household. And so uh, naturopathic medicine, while I never heard that term, um, it, looking back to it, it was a very nature's way of healing in my household. Like my mom would do steam inhalation for colds. We used to quote unquote fast just on clear broths, you know, when we felt really sick. Um, just like very simple, like really amazing ginger, garlic, uh, awful teas, but they were so immune stimulating, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. during these uh, times. So that was more of my upbringing. You know, I had a lot of exercise. I grew up on very traditional Hungarian food, which while it's meat-based um, and dairy-based and that, you know, there is, as, as we'll talk about, um, it's not the type of medicine that I'm practicing now, more so the whole food plant base. Um, it, it was very fresh, though, too, because on the on uh, the other parts of the food was very, very fresh, like very, um, there was nothing processed, really, like growing up. So um, going into uh, college, I, you know, I really wanted to transform the world. I really did. It was, it was, there was a, a, a huge calling for me for that, and I... I, I felt that medicine was the way to do that. Mm -hmm. um, interestingly, though, you know, and this was the first turn, I will say, in my life. Um, I went from being an athlete and a straight-A student to college where even though I was going down this pre-med path, I really lost my way. I started drinking a lot. I started working all the time. I was getting, you know, B's and C's in school. Um, and I and I really, I, I was struggling. I was struggling a lot. Um, it was the first time where, I don't know if I hit rock bottom, but for me, I definitely had a, a, a transition period where I felt so out of control of my life. Mm. Um, and I went back and I really tuned into just what I knew, what, like what my truth was, like what a, what, a, what a truth was. And so I just started exercising. I started eating really well again. You know, I started eating fresh foods instead of the cafeteria foods and instead of processed foods. I mm -hmm. stopped working so hard. I started paying attention more. And out of that, I started to heal. Um, so that was the first point, which was really interesting, and I never I never paid mind to it, to be honest with you, until recently. Um, and then from there, I worked in a hospital, and uh, it was pivotal, because when I was working in a hospital, I started to see an environment that was really cold, and it was disease care, you know, it was disease management, and I wanted health care. Like, that was my mindset. My mindset was health care. So disease care rather than... Yeah. Instead of getting healthy. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And instead of health care, it root. was disease, exactly, disease management, right? Um, and, and that's what I saw, right? I saw, I saw us trying to manage illnesses, 
right? Instead of going deep and actually bringing about health um, in these settings. And it was an isolated setting, granted, but it was very, uh, it was just, it was so powerful because when I, when I did that, I was like, this is not what I thought this was going to be about. This is not, it didn't resonate. Yeah, amazing. It didn't resonate. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, you know, I was just, I, you know, even at a young age, I was just like, well, what do I want to do next? Like, I just need to figure out what I need to go into. Um, and obviously that was, that was a really big disconnect with that. I want to transform the world, um, mm -hmm. into holy cow. Now I don't know what I'm going to be doing with my life. So I, I, I happened to get an internship in Australia, which was phenomenal. I've always wanted to go to Australia. Um, in 1956, there was a Hungarian revolution and, <clears throat> Um, during that time, um, Hungarians really went two different ways. They went to Australia and they went to the United States. And my family came, most of my family came to the United States, but I had a large group of, of, of family that actually went to Australia as well. So Australia was always on the back of my mind. So I went there, I did advertising and marketing, believe it or not. Um, it was, it was kind of quite a shift from medicine. Um, and you know, it was, it was fun. It was fun. And when I came back to New York, which is where I was, um, I really started to, you know, just get into that world. And again, interestingly enough, I, as I was getting into that world, I was following the things that were pulling me further from my, from my, from my being, from my truth, from what I wanted to do with my life. I was following money. I was following recognition. I was good at, I was good at what I was doing. So I was just kind of kept getting promoted. I kept moving up. Um, but still I started to go down a nine year road of, of what eventually led to me being soulless. Um, and interestingly, again, you know, like looking back at my time, um, it was like I was leaving breadcrumbs for myself in a forest. Uh, and what I mean by that is that even as, as I was focused on, and now I, I see like the wrong thing at that time, it, it was just me moving through the motions of life. Um, I, st I, you know, I got my Pilates certificate because I felt really good. I was into yoga because I felt so good. You know, it was just such a connection. I started going to counseling, you know, every now and then. And, but every time I walked away, it was just, it was such a connection to like anything and everything that I wanted to do. Everything was interconnected. It was so interconnected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was almost like as I was losing myself. You were gaining. I was getting, yeah, I was gaining these little like pieces of recognition. It was mm -hmm. like the sun coming out on like a really, really cloudy day. You know, it was just like these little pieces, although I didn't hold on to them for some reason at that time. Um, maybe I wasn't ready for it. And, uh, and, uh, I did a nutritional course and I got certified in that, you know, and, and it was just, it was, it was this part of this journey that I feel started to ground, you know, what I do today even, or, or it was, you know, when you, when you build kind of a foundation, when you, when you see what you really need to be doing in this life, it's that much more powerful. I mm. think it just snaps mm -hmm. to it. Right. Um, anyway, so nine years later, I, I, I couldn't do it anymore. I was waking up. I was, I was eating, drinking, working myself to, mm -hmm. to, to just death, really. Like I was, I was soulless. And, uh, I woke up one day and I said, this is enough. I can't, I, that was my rock bottom moment for me. I just, I was, it was, there was more days where I thought, what is the point of this? Like, mm -hmm. what is the point of life? You know? And, and that was a very scary thought for me to be playing in my head. Um, so that was my pivotal point. Like that was a pivotal point. I, I, I moved out of Manhattan. I moved upstate to my parents' house, um, in New York. I, you know, I just started to do a lot of deep work. Like I just started to look for what I wanted in my life. I was, I thought actually I was going to go into environmental studies because again, trying to get tap into like that transforming the world like how do I do that like what what is what is my way of of giving back you know what is my way of of really I don't know just just allowing my talents to come through where I am really making an impact mm -hmm. in this world um and so I thought environmental studies was going to be it. I thought I was going to do maybe environmental entrepreneurship. I was looking at University of Colorado, I remember. Um, and I found Bastyr University, which is the medical school that I went to. 
And interestingly enough, I wasn't even searching for naturopathic medicine. I was searching for consciousness. I was searching for social change. I was searching for, you know, these terms around this environmental field. Mm -hmm. um, and they came up. And so I started looking in. I started reading the mission statement. And this word popped out, and, and it was social consciousness. It was in their mission uh, statement or somewhere in their, in their vision um, of what they wanted to do. And I remember immediately it was like it, it was it was you know have you, it, with magnets mm -hmm. you know when there's just like a perfect match it's just like so powerful it's just yeah. you can't, and it's hard to almost break it away mm -hmm. I just knew I knew I was like this without a doubt without a doubt mm -hmm. without a doubt it was it was like what I was mentioning with the breadcrumbs it was like everything I've done in my life just led to that moment where I was like this is the medicine I wanted to do in my 20s and I just didn't know it existed. Mm -hmm. I never knew naturopathic medicine was even a thing, you know. We don't unfortunately it's not it's it's not a part of our common vocabulary. You know, our kids don't grow up, not every kid grows up knowing that you have naturopathic mm -hmm. um, medical options, you mm -hmm. know. So, um, it was just it was powerful. It was powerful and and ever since then, you know, it's only continued to shape how I practice medicine. Um, it provides, you know, not only with the foundation, and then I did my master's of acupuncture um, and oriental medicine. And then I also got, I also was certified in cranial sacral and visceral manip, which are very hands-on therapies, because um, I saw profound change. Like, I mean, it's, it, you, can't, you can't argue when people leave your presence and they feel so much better about themselves, their lives, and then they start touching other people because yeah. say they're even, say they have one person in their life and most people have, what, 10, 20, mm. something like that, mm. right? That is that beautiful butterfly effect. The butterfly effect, a name and concept formulated by American meteorologist and mathematician Edward Norton Lorenz in the 1960s, is the theory that one small change in the starting condition of an event, such as the flutter of an innocent butterfly soaring through the sky, can have a dramatic effect on the outcome of an event, like cause a tornado on the other side of the world, or less drastic, cause a plane to experience turbulence. Right? It's like, you're, that person is better, and because they're better, they can reach their highest potential, right? And if they can reach their highest potential, then they can actually infuse that by being just them. They don't even have to do anything. They just have to be themselves. They yeah. infuse that into people yeah. around them. Mm -hmm. And then that and, and then that person on whoever they in touch. And then and then it's this and then that's that's how you transform humanity. Like that's right. how you transform the world, you know? Yes. I, <laughs> I love that. It's it's like I love to it's like it's like when we change the universe changes around us. All we have to do is, is look within ourselves and shine, radiate that amazing being that we are. Absolutely. I, I believe that in the core of my being, and that is how I practice medicine. That is how I practice yeah. medicine. That's how I come and I sit with every single patient is already recognizing that they are can manifest, number one, they can manifest anything that mm -hmm. they want, right, in their life. Number two is the fact that there is abundance in this world, right? Mm -hmm. So it's what you just mentioned, mm -hmm. right? It's that, it's that there is, there is this, there is this, the, the, what you give out will come back at you, right? The universe yeah. is a yes machine. So you say, I'm going to create this. The, the universe is like, yeah, you're going to do that. You're going to do that, right? Exactly. You're the going to do the it. universe is like a, you, you say a yes machine. Uh -huh. you, the universe is like a Xerox. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Actually, I've never <laughs> heard that, but I love it. And I'm going to use it <laughs> with your permission. Whatever. <laughs> um, I think I got it from somebody else. I got it too. Oh, I love that. It's in, it, we, whatever we put out, whatever we put out is we get it right back. Right back. Yeah, right back. You know, I think it's Henry Ford that said, you know, if you think or if you think you cannot, you're correct. 
you know, and, 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 and it, and it's a powerful statement because it truly, well, it's a powerful statement for so many reasons, right? It's a powerful statement because we now know, because, uh, when we look at research in psychoneural immunology, that what you think creates this amazing chemical changes in your body, physiological mm -hmm, changes, mm -hmm. and that constantly is going to affect your physical health. And so we know that on one side. And then on the other side of things is what we were just talking about with the universe. If you're constantly thinking about why you can't do something or or, or the fact that, um, you know, I, I, I keep getting this headache, this headache keeps coming up or there is all these negativity that's going to perpetuate itself. Now, on the other side of things, if there's hope, if, if you believe that there is healing, right, if you are constantly searching, right, for the answers by asking the great questions, right? And I think the questions are much more important than the answers are usually, right? This is where more of who you are as a person comes through. Um, you are then going to have that answer. Like that's that's what's going to come back at mm -hmm. you as a Xerox, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. Um, yeah. and it's, that's really, that's like, that's such a powerful, that has, and as I mentioned, like there's so much that has come form from me starting off with not only naturopathic medicine as my core, um, acupuncture, cranial sacral, visceral manip, moving into True North Health, which is basically nutrition-based medicine, which is above and beyond. Mm -hmm. if, if, if somebody asked me right now, you know, what is, what is one thing I can do that will greatly affect my health, um, that will benefit will greatly benefit my health, I would say, change your diet. Like, right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Like, whole food, plant-based is absolutely changing people's lives across multiple layers, right? And it goes back to, I'm just going to take it right back because it does. It It's not only the profound change that you'll have health-wise in your body, right? Um, and this is not, this is, this is not just... A, a singular opinion. I mean, this is from seeing thousands and thousands of individuals that I've seen in practice just from that one thing. Yeah. Improve, improving, improving yes. themselves. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you, you can go out and you can search, you know, multiple plant-based doctors and, and what they've found and what they've seen. And now thankfully we're starting to see documentaries coming out about the powers of food is medicine. You know, it's like this, it's, it's, we've been talking about it since Socrates, since, since, since way before time. And now it's finally sinking in. Right. Um, and I was mentioning that not only is it profound in your body, but then we do, we need to take it forward. Right. When you make these choices, you're making a social conscious decision as well. That's going to transform how animals are treated, which is so powerful in this world because energetically that's, that's right. really powerful. Mm -hmm. Um, and then on top of it, you're making an environmental stance. I mean, this is the mm -hmm. most sustainable way to eat. So above and beyond, you know, that is, that is at the core of it. Um, and, and from there, it has really transformed, like my practice has transformed from that um, into really more mind, spirit. Body. Going back to cleaning, cleaning mm -hmm. the gut, mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot of compassion in that. Cleaning the gut means taking care of your body. Absolutely. And cleaning your gut means when we clean our gut, when we take care of our bodies, we're vibrant and energetic, and we we feel good. And isn't that isn't there um, a dopamine released and um, those feel good mm -hmm. chemicals that release? Am I, mm -hmm. Yeah. Am I saying the right mm -hmm. thing? Does it sound? Yeah. Neurotransmitters. Um, yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. And then and then we're compassionate towards other people. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is, this is what I feel. Um, so there's, there's a couple of things to dissect what you said, because it's so powerful, right? It's just, mm -hmm. it's so powerful. Number one, the one thing I heard you say, which I, which, which is at the core, right? Is the fact that when we do acts of kindness towards ourselves, like eating really well, like eating whole food plant-based that's clean, that has all these amazing phytonutrients, antioxidants in it, that is um, 
really enlivening and like enlivening the cells, cleaning out our bodies, right? It's an, it's, it's on a daily basis. You're helping your natural detoxification pathways and you are creating health every single day, right? What you eat either contri contributes to disease or it contributes to health. So when you're eating whole food plant-based, mm -hmm. you're contributing to health, right? Mm -hmm. um, and when you look back at it, you can see a lot of the chronic illnesses in our in our modern day society, almost every single one of them. And actually, I would even venture to say probably every single one of them. I, I, some people would probably um, argue with like infectious diseases because, hey, it's a virus or a bacteria, but it comes back down to your immune system, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have a really strong, healthy immune system, you are much more resilient, right, to these different kinds of uh, pathogens that could come in. So in essence, it really is about how you are treating yourself with what you are putting in your mouth. And so on, on one level, that is that self-love. And that self-love is so powerful. It is also, even, even if we remove just the piece about the physical food and just go into that self-love, so much let me back up. When I have patients now that actually are saying, hey, Dr. Varesh, I am eating healthy. I'm doing whole food plant-based. I've been doing this for a year. I've been doing this for two years, but now I'm, I'm sabotaging myself or I still get into these different kinds of spirals. There is such a large percentage of individuals that it's actually an it's, it's not even just about the food, right? At that point, it's also about understanding why, why we feel like we can't love ourselves or do things that are kind for ourselves. So it comes mm -hmm. into the compassion piece as well. Um, Self-compassion, it starts with. And a lot of my practice is around that. It's just around unraveling and asking the questions like, what's, what is the obstacle to cure for you? Like, what is standing in the way of you reaching optimal health if foods in place if there is already you know exercise maybe in place or some other of the foundations of health which we can talk mm -hmm. about um it, it many times does go back into the fact that they don't feel worthy enough because of say limiting beliefs because of stories that they've told themselves for years and years that they don't feel like they deserve it right and so it doesn't and at that point in time you have to then understand that we are, we are human because we are human on so many different levels, right? And right. so it's, it's the food is super important. I'm not, I'm, I'm never going to take away how important the food is, but if, if that was the only piece, it'd be so easy. It just would be so easy, but it's not easy, right? We can't, it, a lot of people can't just get well on just the food alone, even yeah. though thousands of people get better on it mm -hmm. and, and actually do feel fantastic, it, it goes deeper. And then you have to really get at the core of what's going on um, in, in an individual's life. And it's about listening and hearing what they need in order to transcend, in order to move into optimal health. Right. So, I have an example. Yeah. Do you mind if I yeah. share? Oh my gosh, please. So I have, the, I have a friend who, who would often say, Bridget, but, but, I hate cooking. I can't even get there because I, I hate cooking. She would use the word, I hate cooking. Mm. And so I spent some time honing in and listening to her. And whenever she would use this word, I, I would stop and listen and, um, and be very still mm -hmm. and let her feel her feelings. And, and time went on and still hating. And, and one day I just had this light bulb that went off and I said, I'll just cook for her. Mm. Sometimes we just need to do it for people. Sometimes we just need to say, here. Absolutely. Here. And let me do it for you. Just one time, two times. <laughs> like, <one> time. <laughs> Three times you're out. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> you're striked. Like, striked. Like, <laughs> Struck it out. I need my oxygen. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. No. I'm teasing. <laughs> I would cook in front of her, and um, so we just enjoy our meal together. Mm -hmm. So it's a really a win-win situation. Yeah. She would watch how I just put love into the food, mm -hmm. and I would make it very colorful, and um, and delicious. Mm. And so, so I would prepare it even beautiful on her plate for her, and I I would even juice for her, mm. and I would show her how fast it is. And most important thing is. 
I'm, I'm putting a lot of love into it. Yeah. Lots and lots of love. And she sees that I'm still in, I'm still in my work clothes and she sees that I've been working all day. Yeah. And, um, and I'm still just, I can't wait. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so excited to, um, sit down with my friend, cook with her and sit down and, and enjoy our meal together and just talk away about yeah. anything in this world. And, and then something magical happens. She started cooking. Nice. Yeah. She started cooking more and more. And now it, it's, it's just a thing now. Mm -hmm. That's so and, powerful. Yeah. So some, sometimes or even oftentimes, we just need to listen. Just, just listen and, and let that, and listen and, and then feel that light bulb go on. Absolutely. It's okay to do things for people once in a while. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's really okay. Absolutely. And that's true friendship. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's, it's a mixed emotion for me to the, the amount of people that come and sit in my office. And I sit with patients for an hour for my first initial. Um, and the, it, it actually, it, it breaks my heart in some ways. It actually does break my heart um, in the sense that there's so many times that people will, will get up after that hour and say, thank you for listening. And, and I actually, I, I wrote an Instagram post just on this because it, it, it blew my mind and it, it happened so much that I was thinking, what have we done, right, in the sense of how we are healers in this world, all of us? I mean, this is, this is I'm not even just going to put this on the medical profession. I'm going to be putting this on all of us as, as human beings, mm -hmm. right? That, that we, and, 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 I, and I love when people actually can show gratitude. I think gratitude is, a, is a so, such an important um, tool to not only be present, but for happiness in this world as well. So, so, so thanking for, for thanking someone. Um, but in, in, in many cases, it's coming out of a lack also. Like, it's just they've never been listened to or they haven't had that in their lives for so long. Um, and it's just like what you were talking about with your friend. Like, I mean, your, your act of kindness, your act of service actually came from you hearing what it is that she really needed or or being able to also listen to your intuition which is so vitally important and we tune it out like it's almost like the devil like you know that we want to like push away but it's actually this angel that is is truly sh should be right or mm -hmm. or could be guiding us but we don't allow it to and i think that um just there in that presence you've already created healing, right? You've already created healing with just being there, just listening. And then on top of it, you showing that kind of love. Love is such a healing power. I mean, it yeah. really is. I mean, even if even if many times um, just being able to allow somebody to cry or giving somebody the space to unwind or just to understand what it is they need to remove in their obstacle or be able to be able to just say how scared they are, you know, because they've just gotten that cancer diagnosis or be able to, you know, talk about their fears yeah. around why they can't make the changes in their lives. Right. Or a big one for me also is that people, you know, feel fear. They feel stuck in their world because they don't have the social support around them. Right. I mean, being in a place where you know in your truth that this is a healthy way to be, maybe whole food, plant-based, mm -hmm. you're making that transition. But if you go out there in the world and you don't have that support, that can be detrimental. That could be very isolating for people. That can be very uh, demeaning, actually, for some people. They can start to lose people they love, possibly, mm -hmm. you know? Um, mm -hmm. And then it's the, then it's the age-old question is that, you know, if you know, is it time to let some people go, you know, or, you know, do you hold on? Do you hold on with your life or is it time to let people go? There's so much that comes up yeah. when you're sitting with a person and you really are trying to get them to the next level for their, 
for their health, you know, because it's just, I mean, we're just, we're complex. We really are. Like, well, there's so right. much that goes into that. You mentioned the social aspect. Yeah. And, gosh, I can't emphasize how important it is to stay connected. Mm -hmm. And there's so, there's so many outlets, free outlets. It doesn't have to be paid. There's free meditation yes. um, everywhere. Um, and, and I feel that it's so important for us to care so much that we pile on our resource so we have lots of gifts to give. That is the best best present that we can give people is resource. If it's within their means, mm -hmm. I would say um, join groups, mm -hmm. join, um, take classes, meet people. Um, and there's just so many amazing things, mm -hmm. um, especially, especially today. There's a lot of groups that's available with no charge. Yeah. Um, but, but regardless, Get them connected. Yes. Yeah. Get it's them connected. really important. Yep. Yeah. So they can expand um, their assembly, create this amazing assembly. And um, as as healers, we have we have all that all that amazing resource. Yeah, absolutely. And here's the thing: is that you know I think to piggyback on what you just said, support community, love is actually one of the foundations of health for me. So for my foundations of health, it's it's about whole food plant-based diet. It's about movement on a daily basis. It's about sleep, you know, getting adequate amount of sleep every night, at least seven to nine hours. It's about stress management, not, Ooh, nine. not removing stress because you can't do that. It's about really not only managing your, how you're perceiving stress, but also having really amazing tools. Like we talked about yeah. meditation, we talked about yoga, things like that. Right. Um, community and support, and then spirit. And so spirit means being really aligned with your purpose in life, you know, and being really um, joyful in approaching a day, you know, and that, and that we can go in a little bit more detail. But going back to community, there are studies after study showing that we are social beings. If you want to even go into like the, the fact of our stress management, um, when we are in fight and flight, which is our sympathetic nervous system response. So whether a bear is coming at us, we're on TV and having thousands of viewers coming up or, you know, whatever the case may be, you have a fight and flight. Yeah. It's this natural, there might be a potential danger. We have got to survive. So it's a survival technique. And it's, and I it, love that feeling. I love, it is. It's, it's a survival I, technique. You know, bear every morning, know, right? not the alarm clock. It's like, ah, <laughs> your sympathetic tone goes yeah. right up, right? Um, and the reason I say that is because actually in that time, we release oxytocin. And most people know oxytocin as a bonding hormone, you know, a mother and a child kind of um, feeling care, feeling uh, well-being. And it's released so that during this time, we can seek support, which then supports us even more so because more oxytocin is released and then it's cardioprotective means that it's protecting our cardiovascular system so our bodies are so brilliant it has these natural ability to protect us what we do though right is we isolate we don't want to talk to anybody we feel maybe fear around it because we don't know how to articulate or 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 we don't have the support so piggybacking on what you're saying is that Support is so important and it doesn't have to come in one avenue, you know, so if say you're making a transition to say a whole food plant based diet there, first of all, there's a lot of meetups up there. There's like vegan meetups, there's uh, whole food plant based meetups, there's, um, you know, there's uh, different kinds of like festivals that go on, you know, all over the place. But then on top of it, even if you don't want to sign up for one of those, you can do like a yoga, right? Like you can go, you can join like a different yoga studio and you can find which one you know, resonates with you, a Pilates studio, you start to talk to individuals there. A lot of times people have the same exact um, energies or they have the same exact likes and dislikes. And you're, you're soon to find 
a community that mm-hmm. you really enjoy being around. And so, and that does give you, that does empower you. It empowers you because then you're around like-minded individuals and you have a support structure, which above and beyond, it's one of the things that creates longevity in our mm-hmm. lives. When mm-hmm. we look at, you know, telomere research, which is the ends of our chromosomes, which we're looking into longevity. When we look at the blue zones, right? Like everybody's talking about the blue zones. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I need to it's amazing. Write that down. Yeah. All of these, <laughs> all of these, but they, there's a commonality between them. And when you look at physiologically, mm-hmm. as I mentioned before, there it, it there is a way that that actually changes our physical being, which then gives us health. Oh my God, we're so so fascinating. It's so cool. It's so Mm -hmm. amazing. It's so amazing. Yeah. So going back to isolation, there's a couple of things I I wanted to um, go back to. The isolating, and then I wanted to go back to sleep. Yeah, please. So so Mm -hmm. isolating, um, I noticed that sometimes when we spend a lot of time researching about the Mm -hmm. world and researching about ourselves and doing all this... um, all this reading about our human body and our, our mind, and that is so wonderful, but it's not fulfilling. Mm-hmm. It's that moment when we spend time with somebody who is like oxygen. I love that. Oh my gosh. I it's that. like, <laughs> I love it. It's like, it is. It's, it's true. Yes. Like, yes. Bre- like you can't it's, live without right. oxygen, right? You can't yeah. really do that with love, Sorry. <laughs> I, I should it's be like, Italian, but I'm actually <laughs> Hungarian and I talk with my hands. <laughs> It's, yes, it's yeah. a, it's that friendship. Yeah. Um, having that true. <laughs> <laughs> now you're going to be doing it. <laughs> having that, oh. that friendship and yeah. laughing is yeah. truly like, like walking into, like you're getting a dose of O2. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like you can breathe better. Did you notice that you can breathe better when you're laughing and. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You're, you're releasing all those. Yeah, they actually show one of in the same. I, so I give a, a adrenal health lecture at True North, and I've actually um, I'm I'm hoping to do it more broader into the community because I find it to be please do one of the yeah. most central, uh, just a, a really central theme within uh, busy busy executives and where our world is going. Like I think this is probably where you were going to is the fact that you know when we are busy with trying to accumulate riches and, and wealth and we start to miss the entire point of what wealth is. Mm-hmm. And for me, I, I I figured this catchy term that I used in one of my other like interviews and I was like, health is wealth. And and I and I really believe that because wealth to me is not just money. It's that you have such a, a breath, if not lack of a better term, like a breath of of beautiful uh, you know experiences, right? And and that could be the fact that you are able to manage stressors because you're doing yoga, because you have a meditation practice, because you're feeling centered most days, because you have beautiful people around you that enliven you, that support you, that laugh with you. Um, you have, you know, really, really great, you know, food, fresh food around you, fresh water, you know, clean water, um, these kind of things. Like, that mm. really is where wealth is, right? That's like, a, it's like, a, for me, that's, that's so, I feel like it's so simple, but it's, it's so powerful. Right. It really is so powerful. Um, and, it, and, it's, and it's vitally important for us to really get to that point, you know, and to understand what that means. Because when you, like you said, if you keep following just, first of all, in the, in the age of social media, right? If you keep following the likes and if you keep following this, this path to recognition and the path Mm -hmm. to money, I mean, I personally can say that it doesn't give you happiness at the end. You know, I, I did those paths in my past. Um, it, it's, it's, it doesn't bring you what you think it's going to, unless you are truly, truly centered in yourself and to get there, to understand where your truth is, you have to have optimal health. I, I do believe it. I think you, in order to have, when you have health, yeah. you can rise to your greatness because you feel energized. You feel good. You have this idea of what abundance is. It, 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 
it rarely happens. I, I want to say it almost never happens when somebody is in a state of they feel like crap most days or they can't get out of bed mm -hmm. or they have a headache every single day or they have pain somewhere in their body. They're not thinking of how to bring their truth forward. They're thinking about, oh, I have a headache every day. Oh, mm -hmm. my teeth hurt. Oh, I'm exhausted. You know, so it's just, it's a, it's a, I think it's a mindset shift first of all, but then also it's about understanding like what you were just saying. It's just, it's understanding what it takes in order to be wealthy within like the context of health. So yeah. 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 I, I, yeah. I, yeah. And you were going to mention, you said isolation and sleep. I you mentioned, mention, yeah. yes, I really wanted to go back to sleep. Yeah. Because, oh, I, w I was thinking, I lost, there was a moment I lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> Happens to me all the time. <laughs> um, so, so they were, we were talking about, we were talking about, <laughs> We're talking about how <laughs> powerful laughter is. <laughs> Let's talk about sleep, and then we'll go back to that. Yeah. Um, so you also mentioned nine hours. Is that not too much? Seven to nine hours. Se yeah. Seven to nine. Seven to nine hours. Nope. The, the research, there's a lot of, uh, well, the research does show that, you know, us getting adequate amount of sleep per night. And when we look at, uh, you know, the the what what they're showing as how we can contextualize within individuals and how it affects not only mind emotion and physical health what we have what the national sleep foundation has has um been able to show is that 7 to 9 hours even not only in adulthood but even into like 65 and plus is actually what we need in order to get the most quote unquote, bang for our buck, the most mm -hmm. benefit. Um, what we also see, which is probably where you're going with that, is that if you're getting more than 12 hours of sleep on a continual basis, there is research showing that that also can contribute to maybe cardiovascular disease that also starts to wear on your immune system. So there is a part where there's too much in our society, more so than that, I would say, it's really a fine line that we have to we have to look at because our society is so sleep deprived, so sleep deprived um, that what we have to figure out is that are we sleeping twelve hours or if we have an individual that's sleeping twelve hours, are they sleeping twelve hours because of the fact that they are sleep deprived, you know, or are they sleeping twelve hours because there is a serious you know physiological issue in hand, so. Yeah. Yeah. But nine yeah. hours is recommended. I mean, if you could be sleeping nine hours, that's fantastic. Oh, that would be so That wonderful. would be amazing. <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah. yeah. And to <clears throat> top it off, mm -hmm. if, if you can hear birds chirping outside mm -hmm. the window. <laughs> Peace. How wonderful would that be? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. If everybody could just live probably – well, actually, that's not – it's not everybody's peace, I guess. You know, it's, it's about finding – the right environment that creates the most amount of, of I think, uh, stress, maybe stress management in people's lives. Although I will say being in the country, being in more uh, rural areas, mm -hmm. what you do get benefit about is the fact that you get much more uh, access to clean air. You have probably more access to walking trails and being outdoors more. Um, uh, so those are those are definitely health properties mm -hmm. that a person can bring into their lives, which will benefit them on a daily basis. Going back to that, you know, every day we have an amazing inherent detoxification system that we are constantly using. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's about a lot of times how do we support that? Right. How do we how do we create less toxic burden on ourselves. So these are some of the things that we're talking about, you know, less air pollution, maybe more sleep, you know, um, uh, maybe not as much sound noise. You can probably sleep better too, because there's not as much like uh, artificial light as well, which is so detrimental to our sleep patterns or circadian rhythms. Yeah. Um, you know, and then, and then of course, like I said, getting outdoors, being much more attuned to light and dark cycles. Um, fresh air you maybe you have access to cleaner water than our mm -hmm. 
city systems. So mm-hmm. things like that, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So going back to going back to the social aspect, mm-hmm. there's times when it's okay. There's times when when we will get swept away, no matter how healthy we are, no matter how well we're eating, mm-hmm. um, whether we have whether we surround ourselves with um, amazing like-minded people, we will always get swept away. Absolutely. It's just a matter of being okay with it and recognizing it and bring ourselves back. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Just over and over again. It's so powerful. Um, it, it's, I always say this, it's not perfection, it's progression. You know, and, it, and the one thing I see that's very detrimental to people is that the idea of being perfect or trying to attain perfectionism um, and it's what you were just saying so it's that it's that idea of like okay I'm making this lifestyle shift and then what's going to happen is I'm going to go out maybe on a Friday night and I ate I ate a piece of meat or I had something that was fried or maybe I had a glass of wine or something like that and people instead of recognizing and being consciously aware of this is what I'm doing this is what I'm doing I do the different kinds of health, you know, foundations of health. I, I take care of myself really well. 90, 95% of my time, I'm going to allow myself, you know, just to, to be able to be in this space, right? Or if it just happens, you know, just be in that space, be aware of it, like you said, just to be aware of it. And then the next day, you know how to course correct, right? Like, you know, hey, I don't feel so great because that's what happened, Mm -hmm. but I know I can just have this beautiful plate of salad or I know I can have this beautiful bowl of fruit. I feel better. I can go work out. I can go for a walk. And that progression, that Mm -hmm. like, you know, just... I can eat apple cider vinegar. Yeah, drink. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Just drink a shot. (laughs) Take a shot and you feel great, right? Or, you know, nowadays, you know, you can do like... Um, you know, I, I wouldn't do this without talking to a doctor just in case, but, you know, you could do intermittent fasting, which is really powerful as well. Um, you know, there's so many different ways you can then get back into um, this beautiful health kind of um, just present. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and, and that's the, that is the progression of life. I mean, that is life, right? And so it is very valuable. And it's and it's one of the things that derails people a lot is the fact that they're saying, I was not perfect. It's like, well, nobody is perfect. And oh, that's gosh. that's the big thing. It's, yeah. You know? Yeah. May, yeah. may I add to that? Yeah. I see perfection in everyone. And when when somebody addresses that, they say, I'm human. I'm only human. I'm not mm. perfect. But I see it. Mm. Do you know why? Because everyone has light within them. And that's where namaste comes in. Mm -hmm. And I see the light in all all things. No matter how quirky somebody is, well, difficult. Mm -hmm. There's still something very special about that person. So so maybe they have a quality that I don't have. They could be, um, so I'm just going to use this word, so really, really grumpy and, mm-hmm. and very negative. But, oh, my gosh, they're so organized. Mm-hmm. And I love this about, this is just an example. Mm-hmm. I'm just, I love when people are very organized. And um, I need my house manager to help me with that. <laughs> my, <laughs> my housekeeper is no longer right. She's my house manager. <laughs> She says, That's a really good term for it. She I says, like um, it. Bridget, I, I gave her permission. I, I said, I want you to I want you to always work with me and be very comfortable. Um, I'm hiring you to tell me what I need to do. Mm. And she is so comfortable with me now. That's great. So That's and great. I love it. That's I love great. it. I love when people use use me that way, practice mm-hmm. with me, trust me. Yeah. Um so perfection I I see in all people. And when people say that I'm not perfect and I, I can't be like this person, I'm just only, I'm only human. And I smile because I see their light. And the more, mm. when we see somebody's light, mm-hmm. how can they feel bad about themselves? Mm-hmm. When we smile and when we smile Absolutely. while they're gloom and doom, 
they wonder why are we smiling because we're seeing their light yeah. and the more we see their light the more it expands and the more Absolutely. they start feeling it Absolutely. so it's it goes back to it's okay to give so mm. it's okay to see somebody's light Absolutely. I think I use probably perfection in a different way than, than maybe the way that you do it, because I absolutely agree, agree with you. And, and that's what uh, I was saying before, is that when somebody sits down, they're whole. I mean, there's beautiful light to every single person that walks through there. I and mean, so they're only getting a showering of love. Right, their own. That's that's the way I practice my medicine. And that's who you are. And that's well. And yes. that's that's because it's like what you said. Yeah. It's namaste. It's really is. I see the light in you, um, and and I see the wholeness in everybody. Um, there is there is absolutely nothing that they could do right in order for them to be better at at spiritually at who they are because we are right. We're born in the light of of this amazing being that you know, this is what we, we've been put on this earth to be, right? So that's, that's just, that's just, that's what, that, that's what we are here for. Um, what, what most people are trying to attain is, is, a, it's, when I say, when they say perfect, and maybe we just need to change that word, we maybe just need to change what perfect is. They're trying to continually trying to attain something that I feel like um, is not human. You know, you, 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 it's, it's, it, we, yeah. it, it, it is human to make mistakes. It is human to fail. That doesn't necessarily mean we are not still mm -hmm. worthy of, of wholeness and light and, and beauty like that. So, so there's a little bit of a, a shift. It's like, but that's our, that's, that's the beauty of I who totally we get are. It. You know yeah, what I mean? I get and what you're saying. And so it, maybe we just need to change that word. We should definitely be changing the dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We're, we're going to get perfection out of there. Yeah. Okay, no, no, but, but yeah. I agree. I absolutely actually agree with you in the sense that people, people are quote unquote perfect to start with their idea though of maybe, and it's, maybe it's not their idea of perfection. It's their idea that they can't fail in life, mm -hmm. that if they're failing in life, they are not achieving something. And in actuality, failure is lessons, right? I mean, failure is, you can't fail in life. You know, you, it really is this ability for us to understand how to then change our lives in order to continually grow as human beings, right? Like if we stop growing, we, then, then we stop living, I think, mm -hmm. like as, as a human being, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's, maybe that's what we need to do. We need to be changing there. So I think we just did. Yeah, we did. <laughs> it's going down. Whoever is in charge of the dictionary, let's do yeah. this. <laughs> We're doing it. <laughs> it's our choice. It's our choice. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Pro choice. <laughs> Let this go viral. We're doing yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's um, there's so many ways that the natural medicine can be branched out. And as I as I mentioned before, toning, um, you're you're just toning all aspects of mm -hmm. the human personality from from physical health to their mind to their environment, mm -hmm. what they what they consume, not Absolutely. necessarily diet, it's consumption. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it's a their lifestyle. Um, yeah. I always joke with um, the creator and um, the like CEO of our of our of our clinic, Alan Goldhammer, um, I always say, you know, you've, you've, you've pretty much destroyed like the way that, or not destroyed. I wouldn't say that he, you know, he's really actually shaped. I will say that's actually a better way of, of putting it. He shaped the way that I do medicine in a lot of ways, because it's like you said, it's, it, it, it is really full body medicine. And while the aspects of the medicine that are the stress management, the sleep, the, um, you know, getting into the mind, body, spirit, uh, those are, are aspects that I have brought in through just my own mm -hmm. evolution and through my own um, teachings. It, it, it is such a, a powerful force to be reckoned with when you put it on top of 
like whole food plant based yeah. nutrition based medicine and then also water fasting which is such a huge part of what I do medically supervised water fast um when you when you just combine all mm. that and you don't necessarily just single it out you are really tapping into such a powerful way to heal a person inside out and then how they radiate in the world and then also who they touch and then the environment as well so I mean it's just this amazing like full cycle yeah, I approach love that. to life yeah so I would like to talk to yeah. um we have a few we have a couple more minutes okay. I'd like to talk about how how do our viewers connect with you and um, so can you give the information in regards to True North yes. and whatever information you have, okay. um, any website, anything at all? Uh, yeah, it's exciting. So I'm finally, <laughs> it's been four years coming, but I'm finally getting my website up and running. Uh, it's going to be up by the end of this year. Everybody's holding me to this because it, it has to happen. Um, and that's going to be drchillavresh.com. Mm -hmm. um, so that should be up by 2019. Um, right now, the best way to contact me, you can just you know, message me is uh, Chilla Varesh, so C S I L L A V E R E S S N D L A C. Um, that's my Instagram account. I'm pretty active on there because I really um, try to share a lot of what we talked about today on that. Um, and then True North Health is actually in Santa Rosa, California, which is northern. Mm -hmm. It's like an hour north of San Francisco. And um, that is the best way there is probably healthpromoting.com. So that's the website of the center. So those are the those would be the best ways to reach me if you need to right now so yeah that's yeah, yeah that's that's yeah. great but thank you so much for coming on to the show i always enjoy having you and laughing with you and shifting and aligning the paradigm yes thank you so much for having me <laughs> i had welcome. so much fun <laughs> So did I. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey guys, how are you today? Good. I'm here to talk about how with technology you can make amazing worlds. Come with me. My team and I bring the Halo world to life. Is that you? That is me. I wasn't a math genius and I knew nothing about coding. But you guys do. You guys have the power to change things. I want your job. I want you to have my job.